कैसे हुआ ये सब शुरू We want to build a world where delivery is accessible to everyone. It is insane that we don't live in that world today, right? This is impressive. Hi guys, this is Saklan, and today we are at Airbound. Airbound is building India's first fleet of delivery drones, and today we will be talking to Naman Push, founder and CEO, figuring out the tech. तो नमन मैं आपके बारे में कुछ पढ़ रहा था यू ड्रॉप आउट फ्रॉम कॉलेज नाउ यू आर बिल्डिंग दिस फ्रॉम लास्ट थ्री इयर्स तो कैसे हुआ ये सब शुरू आई वॉज ऑल स्टार्टेड हाँ तो एक्चुअली आई मीन आई आई नेवर वेंट टू कॉलेज तो आई स्टार्टेड वर्किंग ऑन दिस एज अ प्रोजेक्ट वेल आई वॉज इन स्कूल तो इन बिटवीन यू नो टेंथ एंड एलेवेंथ यू नो इट वॉज रियली समथिंग दैट आई वॉज वेरी पैशनेट अबाउट आई वॉन्टेड टू फिगर आउट यू नो हाउ how do you make deliveries more accessible um right and i the tech was very interesting uh, i really wanted to work on these problem statements and so through that i started working on this it was a project for you know about 2 to 3 years then around 20 to 23 ish i think uh, things became more serious and this you know turned into an actual company to abhi hum do teen rooms explore karne wale hain right so which is going to be the first one हाँ तो आई वॉज एम सो मच एक्साइटेड यार लिटरली लाइक आई एम लिटरली एक्साइटेड दिस इज आर कॉम्पोजिट स्पेस सो दिस इज काइंड ऑफ द हार्ट एंड द सोल ऑफ द कंपनी राइट ऑल द पार्ट्स गेट मेड हियर फर्स्ट एंड देन यू नो दे गेट असेंबल्ड इन टू अ ड्रोन सो दिस इज नाउ द होल क्लॉथ कटिंग एरिया दिस वे यू प्रिपेयर द मोल्ड यू प्रिपेयर द क्लॉथ सो दिस इज फॉर इंस्टेंस मी यूज अ फोर्टी टू जी एस एम क्लॉथ सो यू कैन सी दिस इट्स फोर्टी माइक्रॉन्स थिक सो इन फैक्ट यहाँ पे you can see a little bit as i remove from the backing ply mm-hmm. you can see how thin the cloth is true nice so we use this this is in fact the lightest possible carbon fiber available on the market and so we build a lot of parts out of that so in fact here we have a bit of our uh, composites r&d space okay you can see some of the trials and all that we're running and see some of uh, you know the lightweight parts that were focused on make oh. so in fact here this is sort of the weight at which we are trying to make up parts or oh, nice this is this is impressive yeah so that's that's always a very fun easy so that's it this is the r&d space but then as we move you can see how the parts are actually manufactured and this is sort of the main space so this is where all the layups happen all the parts are made so yeah for context like when you are you basically lay the part on the mold yeah. and that's how you make a carbon fiber part so that's why it's all called layups uh so it's a, it's a bit funny that way uh, like this is in fact one of the most complicated parts to manufacture this is a wing so it has to be made in three separate pieces okay. which are then joined together mm-hmm. right uh then later this goes to the assembly team mm-hmm. to be trimmed and managed mm-hmm. so that's there it's a lot of work here i think again it's really on how do you make parts that are so incredibly light basically making like a 1.4 meter wingspan drone that weighs about as much as like uh, someone's phone uh it's very difficult to do and this is the core of how they get that possible so yeah so now once the parts are made here then they move over to you know the whole assembly room where they then turned into a drone so in fact right now as we're trying to ramp up composites you can see that it's right now we're being bottlenecked by composites because no parts are in there everything has been moved on to here and you know turned into drones so oh wow this is our wow. assembly room where we make all the drones you can What see is this something. thing it's not looking like a drone actually yeah so that's that's the point at the end of the day anything that flies without a pilot is a drone like it's it's a very broad term that's mm-hmm. why we we tend to prefer to call these you know crafts or aircrafts okay. um you know our systems because uh, it's it's very different from you know the typical quadcopters that you see so this is built for high efficiency this is i think one of the drones that's taken quite a beating but you can see you can get a sense of the weight of these okay. this is with the with the battery and payload so you can you can also pick it up this is too light yeah so that's and this is with with payload and everything 
right so crazy crazy in fact up there we have one of i am not able to comprehend how is this thing so light yeah it's that's the thing it really comes down to sort of how you're building and out. it has all the parts inside like batteries and yeah. whatever it needs so in fact if you if you're looking sort of more so at just structure so this this has the motors in fact with this the motors are the main component of the way mm -hmm. so it's really about how do you make such strong yet very lightweight structures interesting you are crazy crazy stuff so that's it. in fact without the electronics okay. the weight of the entire structure comes out to be uh, less than 400 grams right and our goal is uh, around how can we bring this all the way down to about 130 grams um so that's there we have a roadmap bread see uh, if we can get there so that's the main thing that we don't want to make it light and compromise strength no. the point is how can you make the aircraft very light while still having you know high strength high stiffness uh you know good safety factor and right? it's really about how you improving the strength to weight ratio because anyone can reduce weight by reducing strength there's nothing special in that true right the process is how do you reduce weight while still increasing strength i don't know if this is a personal bias or what but i i do like ideas that can scale without infrastructure right it's it's interesting to look back at you know the early 1900s and all when you know aviation was just taking off people thought it was more realistic to have flying cars than to have you know crazy interconnected highway network roads to go anywhere you want like the idea of just building out roads for everything is insane and honestly i'm still bewildered that that happened i don't know how to make things like that work um right but i think if you're able to make something that flies effectively i mean the air is a medium we can all pass through and so you know that just brings you skill that nothing else can is ai used in any of the products here so i think the core thing is that it comes down to what is being demanded out of these products mm -hmm. right what is really important with these drones is they're not doing very complicated tasks right it's mm -hmm. very much moving from point a to point b right. you know picking up packages moving them they have to do it very reliably right there's a lot of control systems that do use ai and that do use sort of machine learning models you have your sort of um, mpc controllers and all but the the core challenge with those is it's very hard it's a black box and it's very hard to show and prove reliability with a black box system okay the nice thing about our drone is that it's a very linear control and it's very easy to model out the equations behind it are very simple okay. you're not dealing with complex airflow and all like modeling anything airflow related is either going to be not accurate or very computationally expensive so that's there as we build out layers there's certain places where you know ai does end up being used uh, let's say precision landing is one of them if you want to identify a safe landing zone center your drone around it anything vision based ends up being sort of ai heavy and you know as you're looking into detect and avoid or other things where you know the drone has to be able to navigate around obstacles which is again vision based which will be a core function of ai but at the end of the day these are things that you are adding on top of the system the core bread and butter is good stable algorithms that's what creates a baseline amount of reliability that's what gives everyone confidence in your system and then on top of that you can sprinkle in some extra features with ai so these are sort of what the finished crafts look like uh you know we have a few stored there we have i think one is out for flying right now um so that's it right now it's a lot of it's a lot of us figuring out how to scale the process with you know crafts coming here for testing and something goes wrong they go back to manufacturing for repairs and all so you can see how they kind of split across the two rooms mm -hmm. but the crafts here are sort of complete ready for flight so also this and these are two different models or these are the same thing uh, which ones this and this oh this this is just a testing thing so this is just in like a kit drone that we have no okay. it's a good way to test like let's say firmware changes and all like you want to push mm -hmm. new code oh, right. it's good to just test it on a basic quadcopter see if it works like if there's if there's any critical bug you don't want to lose one of your aircraft on this so we use this a lot for precision landing mm -hmm. because the fundamental principle is just you're identifying where a qr code is and you're centering that mm -hmm. so for that if it's a quadcopter if it's ardon it doesn't matter mm -hmm. better to do it on a quadcopter mm -hmm. so that if something goes wrong we're not losing one of our frames right each frame is very precious to us it there's an incredible amount that you can do with carbon fiber i think what allows us to make such lightweight yet strong carbon fiber structures is it comes down to now we're at the first time in history 
where engineers are learning with carbon fiber as a base. So far, it's always been people that understood metal and metal manufacturing, trying to make metal parts out of carbon fiber. At the end of the day, you can't make an ad beam out of carbon fiber. You can't liquefy carbon fiber and inject it into a mold and have it solidify into a part. You can't plastically bend carbon fiber and make parts the same way you do with sheet metal. You can't weld carbon fiber together. So if you're just trying to replicate metal parts, you think, oh God, carbon fiber is such a crappy material, right? Like you can't do half the things with it. And so it becomes a liability. But there's things you can do with carbon fiber that you can't do with materials. Never can I take a structural foam and wrap it with a 40 micron thin layer of titanium. But we can do that with carbon fiber and we have, right? It's now all of a sudden these things that allow you to make structures that are even stronger than I-beams and all. Our entire basis of structures and structural theory was built on top of metals. We have, we have two centuries of knowledge on how to work with metal. We ha barely have like two decades of like serious knowledge on how to work with carbon fiber. And that is the core thing that needs to change. I think so far there hasn't been enough incentive on how to scale carbon fiber processes, how to make truly lightweight small parts out of carbon fiber. Carbon fiber has always just been a manufacturing problem. How do I make giant parts out of carbon fiber? How do I cure something the size of a room in an autoclave? Right? It's not been a case of how do I create the most efficient possible structures, right? That's something that honestly only we are working on. And I think that really becomes the secret that, you know, allows Airbound to be where it is. So, like, what is the vision behind Airbound? Yeah, I mean, again, like I said, this has changed a lot. This is not what the vision was like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, three years ago or even one year ago, right? But I think the vision here is we want to build a world where, you know, delivery is accessible to everyone, right? This is why making one rupee delivery a reality is so, so important. And it makes sense given the way delivery is today. But just if you think about things from fundamental perspective, there is no way it is energy efficient to move things in such a haphazard manner, right? If we are able to have highly efficient autonomous systems that are able to move things from point A to point B, you get to a world where the last mile is intercity. Getting something from, you know, a store in Delhi to my house in Bangalore would just be it gets picked up from the store in Delhi and it gets dropped off to my house right. in Bangalore. Like, that's how things should be. It is insane that we don't live in that world today, right? Okay. And Airbound is really pushed to make that in. So this was our day at Airbound. I hope you understood the tech behind the drones. And if you want videos or videos, just comment down. And if you haven't liked, comment, subscribe, do that as well. I will see you in the next one.